All right, our anchor speaker is here, Dr. Xu Chen. Uh, Dr. Chen is a National Medal of Science laureate. He's the director of the Institute of Engineering and Medicine at UC San Diego. And as you, if you were with us last night, uh, he's at one of the honorary founding fathers of the NIBIB legislation. And he'll summarize his thoughts about the conference. Here. Yeah, got it. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, it's my great pleasure, privilege, and honor to be here and uh, to uh, give uh, some concluding remarks. Uh, the first uh, thing I'd like to say is uh, warmest congratulations to you, Rod. Uh, Dr. Pettigrew and everyone in the National Institute of Biomedical Imaging and Bioengineering for your outstanding work uh, in the uh, Institute and for the community and for the patients. This is truly remarkable. It's only 10 years old, it's not even a teenager, but what you have done is uh, so mature and so accomplished and influenced so far reaching. It's really beyond belief. Uh, it's uh, really remarkable. And uh, also, uh, today's uh, program, the 10th anniversary celebration, is uh, wonderful indeed. First, uh, we have uh, lectures on innovation for health. Uh, Dr. Francis Collins, Dr. Phil Sharp, uh, Dr. Chuck Vest, uh, and uh, uh, the last lecture by Dr. Horacek. Uh, these are all visionary lectures uh, from the current to the future, like the last lecture, and from the national level to the global level. So it really covers a lot of ground for us to uh, think about, and it's very stimulating. And then we have outstanding lectures on various innovative technologies, such as Dr. Roger Tian's uh, lecture on surgery through molecular fluorescence imaging, uh, Dr. Uh, Carol uh, Pugh's uh, lecture on use of sensors and simulation to quantify a clinical population, and uh, Dr. Harry uh, uh, Schroff's uh, lecture on high spatial and temporal resolution uh, imaging. And then we have the two uh, very moving stories from our patients, uh, Mr. Summers and Mr. Cassano. Then there are also videos that we saw on innovation discovery and health, and there are technology showcases, which I will not uh, read because it's in the program, except to say that the impacts on a lot of diseases, including influenza, cancer, cardiovascular disease, ophthalmological diseases, and neurological diseases, and beyond. So it's really a marvelous program today. I personally learned a great deal and uh, have a lot to think about uh, about the future. Now, Dr. Sharp uh, mentioned about the uh, three revolutions. When I give a lecture on the perspectives in biomedical engineering, I like to show these slides, which are exactly the same as what Dr. Sharp says. Uh, about uh, almost 60 years ago, the double helix uh, was a big uh, breakthrough in biology. And then uh, turn, at the turn of the century, the sequencing of the human genome. As a result, we get such a vast amount of data and information that necessitates the integrative approach to biomedical sciences and engineering. Now, this includes the integration of biology, medicine, and engineering, integration across different levels in the biological hierarchy, and integration of education, research, technology, and a translation. I'll use one slide each uh, to illustrate this. This is to uh, illustrate that biology, medicine, and engineering need to be integrated together for the improvement of human health. Of course, the ultimate purpose is to improve the health of people and combat disease. 
In terms of biological hierarchy, we go from genes to molecules to cells, tissues, organs, and systems. Of course, genes and systems are interrelated as well. So we have this whole uh, series of uh, different scales, but they are all interrelated. We need to take an integrative approach to understand the whole system from every level on up. Now, we need a cooperation not only between academia, clinical medicine, and industry, but also uh, the society, government, and the foundations. So we need to all work together in order to improve people's health. So in this regard, NIBIB plays a very important role. And uh, it uh, not only works with uh, academia, uh, medical community, and industry, as well as foundation and the society. So really, it is uh, playing a very major role in improving people's health. And uh, NIBIB was formed uh, 10 years ago. It was exactly when the second revolution had just happened. So it was very timely that it had, has the uh, mission to improve human health by leading the development, accelerating the application of biomedical technologies. And uh, it's committed to integrate the physical and engineering sciences with the life sciences. It was stated from the very beginning to advance basic research and medical care. And the vision is to change health care. It will push the frontier to make this uh, reality. And I'd like to show a few slides uh, how NIBIB has uh, fostered the uh, career of young and um, uh, established investigators. We just heard the lecture by Dr. Roger Tian. Uh, he repeatedly mentioned this Dr. Nguyen Chuan, who is actually a surgeon. And uh, I'd just like to uh, say here that as a surgeon specialized in ear disease and skull tumors, she uh, received a mentor clinical scientist uh, research career development award, KO8, from the NIBIB. So she will have time to be trained by Dr. Roger Tian in the techniques that you heard. And she developed this imaging technique, which you saw in Dr. Roger Tian's uh, slide, to allow her to distinguish the tumor tissue from the nerves so that they can do uh, uh, surgery very clearly on the tumor to remove it as completely as possible without injuring the uh, nerves. So this is a really remarkable achievement fostered by NIBIB. She also received R01 and uh, also the New Investigator Award. And this uh, is Dr. Darling Tang, who uh, is, uh, was trained as a mathematician. And uh, as a mathematician, he said that uh, this is the first R01 he received in 2004, and uh, that enabled him to work with medical doctors, engineers, and radiologists to uh, lead to the uh, formation uh, development of this index, com computational uh, plaque vulnerability index, so that he can show how vulnerable the plaque in the artery is. And he said this is uh, all due to the fact that he was supported by the um, NIBIB. Dr. Covallo of uh, Georgia Tech, uh, he also was trained in engineering primarily, and the NIBIB allowed him to push forward his research on neuroscience and assistive technologies. And as a result, he uh, was able to work with clinical experts, get his tenure, and work on new areas such as speech, and language pathology. Some of his uh, results are shown here. And the last one I'd like to show is Dr. Dennis Disher. He is a more established investigator, and uh, he uh, received the NIBIB grant to allow him to develop this uh, very novel concept that the extracellular matrix elasticity can uh, modulate the stem cell differentiation on the hard tissue such a hard matrix such as greater than 30 kilopascal, uh, you would tend to have bone development as shown by the marker here. And for the uh, soft ones, it would develop neural-like marker, and the intermediate one would be muscle. And this has become a very important uh, paper that formed the foundation of a lot of studies in this area, a huge impact and led to his election to the National Academy of Engineering. Their paper in Cell in 2006 has been cited 
more than 2,000 times in less than six years and is one of the five most cited papers in cell. So this is really remarkable. And he also trained uh, Dr. Engler, who was uh, the uh, uh, first author as a graduate student. Now he is a uh, faculty at UCSD. So this also allowed the training. So all of these really show how the uh, NI, uh, BIB has not only uh, fostered research, but also research training. As I look at the NIBIB funding, this is what I gathered from the uh, website. It may be wrong, but uh, my sense is it has not really increased that much uh, from 2003, which is about 270 uh, million, to today about 320. Uh, considering the uh, inflation factor, as uh, Dr. Francis Collins uh, mentioned, the real dollar actually has decreased. It's truly remarkable with this kind of uh, limited resources, the NIBIB can achieve so much in research and research training. And um, if we had more funds for NIBIB, what can be achieved is even going to be much, much more. Now, what uh, NIBIB has done is, on the one hand, foster fundamental research. On the other hand, uh, it's translation to clinical application and industrial products. And uh, this is the goal for innovation for health. So again, I go back to the uh, slide I showed before, how uh, NIBIB has worked with all these sectors to achieve the purpose, the function of cooperation and integration. Its uh, achievement is truly remarkable. It's, uh, and in the future, I can see it's going to be even much, 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 much more so. So at this 10th anniversary, I'd like to express my warmest wishes for a happy anniversary to NIBIB, a decade of innovation in health, amazing innovations, discoveries, and contributions to health. Warmest congratulations, most sincere thanks, all best wishes for a marvelous future for NIBIB. Thank you very much.